In this video we're going to make a 2D character aimed towards the mouse position. This is a very basic video and essential for making a 2D top-down game. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so here's what we want to make. Over here I have my basic character moving around, and you can already see that the weapon is aiming straight at the mouse position. So wherever I move the mouse or move my character, you can see that it's looking at the mouse position perfectly. Now when I click on the mouse, yep there you go, the weapon shoots perfectly onto the mouse position. So here is something that is pretty easy to do and essential for any sort of shooting game. Also you can see a bunch of effects that make the shooting feel great. So we have an animation, screen shake and a shoot flash. Then we have the bullet tracer sprite, this was made in a previous video. And finally also a bullet shell particles, which was also made in the mesh particle system video. So go check those out for a more in-depth look into these effects. Alright, so over here we have our goal, let's get to it. Okay, so here we are in our starting scene. All I have is a simple character just standing around with some basic movement controls. As you can see, he doesn't have any arms or hands, so let's take care of that. Here in the editor, let's first build the player's hands and weapon. So here is the player game object. Now it's not visible because this particular animation system only runs when the game is running, but this is the game object. So let's build what we're going to use to rotate towards the target position. So we make a new child empty game object. Let's call this our aim. And then inside, let's make a sprite. And I'm going to drag over here the pistol sprite. Okay, so there's the sprite. Now here, as you can see, the pistol sprite itself is drawn looking to the right. This is important because pointing to the right is a zero angle in Unity, as we will see. For now, let's just test just like this. And if there it is, the player with the weapon on top, okay? Now let's make our script to handle it. So we're going to create a new C Sharp script, call this our player aim weapon, and we drag it straight into the player game object, okay? And now here, since we're attaching this script to the player, the first thing we need is to grab reference to our aim game object. Okay, we have our aim reference. Now let's make our private void update. And in here, the first thing we need is to grab the mouse position. So here we can use this nice function from the utilities, which as always you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. Here is the function in case you want to make it yourself. In essence, it just takes the world camera and does a screen to world point on the input.mouse position. So with that, here we have our vector 3 for our mouse position. Now here we're working on a 2D game, so that means that rotation works differently than in 3D. Now in 3D, you could simply do go into the aim transform and call look at, and here we pass in the mouse position. And this would point the transform towards that position. But if we test this, and just like this we cannot see our sprite anymore. But if we pause the game, we can go into our hierarchy, select the aim game object, and there you go, it does indeed have some rotation. And if we put our scene in 3D, you can see that it is indeed pointing right forwards. So this is not how we want to handle rotation in our 2D game. In 2D, we want the X and Y to always be at zero, and the only thing we're going to modify is the Z, just like that. Okay, so let's go back into our code. And here, we're not going to use transform.lookat. Instead, let's get the Euler angles for our look direction. So first, we have our target position, which is the mouse position. With that, we can calculate the direction, so a vector 3 for the aim direction, which will be the mouse position minus our transform position. And since this is a direction, let's normalize this vector. Okay, so now we have our aim direction. This is a vector with values on the x and y pointing towards the mouse position. Now we need to convert this into a Euler angle. So to do that, we use some math. Okay, so we use this function, we pass in the y and the x, this returns the angle in radians, then we multiply it by this in order to convert our radians back into degrees. And now over here we have our Euler angle, now we just need to apply this to our aim transform, so we go into the aim transform and modify the Euler angles, and we set new vector 3, 
And again, here we are working in 2D, so we pass in a zero on the X, zero on the Y, and now an angle on the Z. And just like that, it should be working. Let's just add a debug.log in order to see what the angle says. All right, let's test. And here we are, and yep, you can see our pistol is indeed pointing perfectly towards our mouse position. And if we look at the console, there it is, you can see our angle. And now you can see that when I put the mouse on the right, yep, there you go, that's the angle zero. And over here we have a 90 and so on. So you can see that the default for Unity, the angle zero is pointing to the right. So that is why we set up our aim sprite to be a pistol pointing to the right. So whenever you draw a sprite that is meant to point in a certain direction, always draw it pointing right. Okay, so just like this, we have our weapon aiming towards the mouse. Awesome. Now let's actually make it look a bit better. Instead of just being an empty weapon, let's add some hands and offset it a little bit. So back in the editor, okay, we have our aim game object. This is what we're going to rotate on the Z to point towards the mouse position. So now the first thing we need is to ensure that our inner sprite, our pistol sprite, is actually correctly sorted. So as you can see, it's a bit higher. So let's drag the sprite a bit like that so that it's right there on this axis. And now let's also push it a bit forward and add some sprites for the hands. Okay, so there it is, offset a bit forward, as you can see, straight on the same axis, and the pistol, and we have two hands. Let's see. Okay, so here we are, and yep, our pistol is now offset and aiming correctly, so as you can see, perfectly falling. Now, the hands are a bit lower, so let's modify our actual aim transform. So here, the aim is currently on 0, 0, let's just move it up a bit. And yep, there it is, now it's more at shoulder height, so it looks much better. Right, awesome. So now, with this working, let's handle some basic shooting. So back in our code, let's first make a function to handle it. So let's call it handle shooting. And we can also put this into its own function. Okay, so we have our two functions being called on our update. First we aim, then we test if we can shoot. So in here, let's do a input.get mouse button down on the left mouse button. So when we press on the left mouse button, when we do, then let's actually shoot our weapon. So for that, let's add an animation. So here, in order to add an animation, we just add the animator component. And then here I have some animations already set up. So here I modified the game object to work with the animations that I prepared previously. But as you can see, everything still works exactly the same. So we have our aim game object. Then inside we have an extra sprite for a nice muzzle flash, as well as the two hands. Here is the animator. As you can see, it's extremely simple. We just have a idle and a shoot animation. And we're going to go from idle to shoot whenever we find the shoot trigger. So there it is, a very basic animator. So back in our code, let's first grab the animator. Okay, so we have the animator that is on the aim transform game object. And down here, when we are testing for the mouse click, we simply go into the animator and we set the trigger. So it's called shoot. Okay, so that's it. Now we should be able to see the animation playing whenever we left click on the mouse button. Okay, so here's our character still pointing to the mouse position. And when I click, there you go, we have a nice shoot animation. So just like that, nicely shooting. All right, awesome. Okay, so here we have our basics working. Now let's set things up like I do in the normal aiming class that you've seen me use in my videos. So all the extra effects will be separate from the aiming class and they're added through an event. So back in here, let's make that event. So first of all, we need to be using system. And then we can add a public event, type event handler, and let's call this on shoot. And now here we want to pass in multiple values. So let's make a custom event args. We're going to set it to pass in the gun endpoint position as well as the shoot position. Okay, so now we can make this event handler of type on shoot event args. All right, that's our event. Now let's go to where we are shooting. So right here, here we're going to trigger our event. So we do an invoke, pass in the sender. The sender is this. And now we need to pass in the shoot event args. So for that, we need to set the gun endpoint position. So let's make that using an empty game object. So back in our scene, we have our aim. Now inside, let's create an empty game object. Call this the gun endpoint position. And now here we can visually place it right there. So that's where our bullet will be fired. 
Now we just need to know this name. So back in here, let's make another transform. Okay, we have this, and now in here we can set that gun endpoint position to be this one dot position. All right, so that's that. Now we need the shoot position, and that's going to be our mouse position. So whenever we do a left click, we're going to play the shooting animation, and we're going to fire the event, which is going to pass in both of these arguments. So now with this, we can easily add some effects without having to modify this class anymore. So let's make a new script. Let's call this just testing and make an empty game object and call it also testing and drag the script onto it. Okay. Now here, let's first add a field for our player. So we add a serialized field for our player aim weapon. And now we can go back into the editor and here we can set it. So there's the field, just drag the player reference onto it. Okay. And now that we have this reference, let's do a private void start. And on start, we go into the player aim weapon and we subscribe to the on shoot event. So just like this, you can already see our event. And as you can see, it contains a on shoot event argus parameter. So here, let's add a bunch of effects. So first of all, let's add some very simple screen shake. So in the utilities, I have some very basic screen shake. So we just shake the camera. And now I also have a class to spawn a weapon tracer. This was created in a previous video, so go check it out. So here we take a from position and a target position. So we use exactly what we get from the event arc. So we pass in the gun endpoint position and the shoot position. And for another event, just adding a shoot flash. Okay, so let's test just like this. Okay, so here we are and everything's still pointing. And when I shoot, yep, there you go. We have some very nice effects. So there you go, we have some screen shake, we have our bullet tracer, and we have a shoot flash. All right, so just like this, it's already starting to look great. Now let's add some bullet shells. Now in order to fire the shells, we also need to know where they should come from. So for that, we can add another game object in order to locate it perfectly. So for this, let's put it right in there. And now back in our script, we just need to do the same thing we did for the gun endpoint. And in order to pass in more values whenever we fire our event, we can simply add it in here. So we just do this, and then down here we do pretty much the same thing. Okay, so you can see how simple it is to add more values whenever we fire our event. So now we can go back into our testing class, and in here we can use the shell particle system that we made in a previous video. And here we spawn the shell, so we go into our event and use the shell position and now we need the direction. So the direction is going to be our aim direction offset by 90 degrees. So again, we're going to do the same thing that we did on the mesh particle system video. All right, so just like that, let's see. And here we are in shoot. And yep, there you go, we have our shell particles leaving exactly where they should. So just like that, it looks great. Again, this is part of the mesh particle system, so go watch that video to see how this effect works. As you can see, the particles stay there forever. Okay, so here I've polished things up a bit, so now the player is also animated, and as you can see, the pistol, once it goes past that, there you go, it inverts, so the player no longer holds the weapon upside down. So here it is, everything is working, I can move, I can shoot, there you go, some nice particles, nice effects, and everything is looking great. And again, the way we set up our things makes our code very nice and clean, so all of these particle effects are all completely decoupled from the player class, so the player has no idea that all of these effects are being added on top. So we could add or remove more effects, and we wouldn't have to touch the player class at all. So again, here is our nice effect, and here we have our simple aim shooting. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.